Oh, Showtime's been a network we've watched since, you know, for years, uh, even since we was kids. But uh, Sasha Jenkins, our director, uh, Mass Appeal, our production company, uh, Showtime, they all came and they wanted to help spread our story to the world. It's a great network to do it on, and here we are. And what a great title of Mike's and Men as well. I don't <laughs> yeah. know who came up with that. Uh, part of the reason uh, I've read uh, for the documentary is to, to kind of tell the story of, of the difficulties you all faced uh, in your rise to fame 20, right. 20 or so years ago. Do you think things have improved since then in, in inner cities, uh, in New York in particular? Well, well so I want to say things, some things have improved, right? You see guys like us able to come out of our circumstances and take what was gritty and, you know, multiply it to something uh, of success. That's an improvement, right? That's the opportunity of improvement. But there's still a lot of problems there. A lot of people are still in a poverty situation. Uh, but guys like us and our story should inspire them to make it out of there. You know what I mean? There's, there's an exit. This, this is a Showtime doc that you're doing. Talk of another one with Hulu coming as well. Yeah, the Hulu is actually a scripted series. So, so the documentary, we call it like it's our Bible. <laughs> and we'll say, uh, the script this series is like our Ben Hur. You're gonna have an actor <laughs> play you guys. Yeah, play yeah. We actually got a guy named Ashton Sanders playing uh, playing my character, and uh, we have uh, Shamik Moore playing Raekwon, which is uh, gonna be pretty interesting. And you've largely produced every group album or solo album. Do you have a favorite? Well, my favorite uh, it changes between uh, Only Built for Cuban Links and Liquid Swords uh, by the Jizza. We're, we're on the topic of the different albums, the, the way they're delivered has changed so much over yeah. your over your career. Does the fact that so much goes on to streaming now and it's focused on individual songs as opposed to the, the broad album, does that disappoint you? It doesn't disappoint me. You know, music started on a 45 single, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I think everything is a circle, so now we're back to the single business. And it gives the artist a, a better chance to develop. But he has to be smart to put out that single and make it good. Now we do miss the concept of a great album, like you know, remember Pink Floyd? You got that album, you can play it from beginning to the end, or or you get uh, the Marvin Gaye "What's Going On" album, and you can play it from beginning to the end. Thirty Six Chambers, another album, you can play from beginning to the end. So we're missing that part of it, right? The whole uh, experience. But still, I think the single business is what makes an artist uh, become, you know, make, make his awareness grow. And I think it's, uh, it's still healthy for us. Where do you stand on the streaming wars? You know, Spotify, Apple, Amazon <laughs> wants a piece. I mean, well, the funny thing about it, you know, it took us a long time to find a way to monetize screen, uh, streaming, right? And a lot of artists were suffering because it was we, we was losing revenue. Now that we finally monetize it and we're finally starting to make some equity off it, right? Uh, Amazon is coming in to give it away for free. But I'm hearing. I don't know if this is correct. I'm hearing that even though they're going to give it to their customers for free, we'll still make money. So as long as the artist is still making money, I think that uh, made That's the best the man world, win. Right? Yeah, made the best man win. You, you sold one special edition album <laughs> yeah. to Martin Shkreli, someone yeah. who our viewers know very well, <laughs> for, for $2 million. Right. Right? He's was currently it? being moved out of prison, by He's... the way, for running... His Can I say hi to Martin? Well, yeah, well, so yeah, I was going to ask, what was your view about all of that and how it's unfolded? No. Who's got the album now? Uh, Has it I, gone to the government? Yeah, the government has it. I heard it's in, like, one of the government offices over there. Would you want it back? Uh, you know, I mean, I would love it back. It, you know, I, the album felt like a child of mine. <laughs> so it's like my child is off to college and traveling the world right now. I don't know. Okay, is the public ever going to get to hear this album? Um, you know, uh, I, guess, I guess, you know, time will tell on that. What I would like to say about the process of that album, though, is that the idea is that music was being devalued, right? You ever notice certain industries get devalued? And how do we bring value back to those industries? And Once Upon a Time in Shaolin was an attempt to bring value back to the music industry by saying, OK, treat music as art something that is uh, is like objective, like a Mona Lisa, mm -hmm. you know, like like a, like a like a Egyptian scepter. Let, let it be valued at that. And then when it's hard to get, everybody wants it, right? So it was it was part of capitalism as, at its best, I guess. Well, we well, hope you get it back if that is the intention. I want to ask very quickly, you're, you're a vegetarian and you've done some work with Impossible Foods. Uh -huh. uh, are you planning to, to invest in their IPO, which is which is upcoming? I would love to uh, invest me and a few buddies. We uh, the funny thing is I have some few friends in Australia that's, you know, also interested in bringing their products out there. So uh, I would love to see that. Look, veganism and vegetarianism is healthy for our planet. We know that, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think no animal, this is my opinion, I don't think no animal ne needs to die for us to live. 
All right, the same cow, he eats grass. Mm -hmm. All right, he gets 200, 2,000 pounds from eating grass. I don't want to eat grass, but <laughs> I'm saying we should be able to, you know, not have to uh, put animals through suffering and kill them in order for us to survive because this planet Earth provides for everything that walks upon it and everything that swims within it. Do you, do you invest in any other stocks? Do you get um, you know, I was, I was kind of light on the stocks and just learning more about it now, you yeah. know. My, my, my investment was into my music, uh, music equipment, uh, and things of that nature, and building studios, and it, it worked out for me. But at now, I'm, I don't get to this very mature age. Uh, <laughs> Wait, you're not diversifying your bonds? Now I'm very, I'm very diversifying my bonds. You're an icon, you know, for, for a lot of people on Wall Street and a lot of business people. And I think it goes back to that Dave Chappelle. Yeah, you did. Wow. Know what, know what I think also, I mean, first of all, thank you for that. But uh, I will say something I feel that's important, right, is that, you know, we recognize that every industry has its players that help it grow, mm -hmm. right? Like, like, you know, you're talking now about the, the cannabis industry, right, and how a lot of people in my community are not benefiting from the way it's now growth, it's now made it to the stock exchange, it's now legal in some countries, legal in some states, and yet, it was something that we as young entrepreneurs, we kind of started that pharmaceutical part of the business. Uh, and so the same thing with music and things like that, you know, Wu-Tang has went on to probably make our industry at least a billion dollars mm -hmm. through our music and, and through our videos and records and, and, and our movies. And I just, I just uh, hope that, you know, that those who are in control of capitalism and in control of these markets realize that it's, it's, it's young entrepreneurial minds. Like, 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 like myself, Mr. Uh, Oliver Grant right here, my brother Devon, uh, ODB. When we was young, we were still entrepreneurs. And we paid all our energy to make our product grow. And now that product is a worldwide product. So you got to kind of now realize, well, we got to start in, younger in these communities and find out what's the next product because it all benefits and helps our country grow.